you know, when it gets down to a purchase and you hear that this, um, this person goes into escrow, I think that it'll be easier for them to make a decision to go with you if you planted the seeds correctly in the very first conversation. And so when you are doing, let's say, a prequal call, right, or, or you're getting that initial sales conversation, really what it's about is kind of differentiating yourself and planting the right seeds that you could revisit on the second call. And so some of those seeds would be like, um, you know, maybe using the same exact script, right? Like say, hey, I appreciate you for holding. The reason why they're transferring you over to me is because I'm actually authorized to give you the information you need. Or in this case, it'd be giving you the pre-qualification that you need to actually start shopping. Now, the reason why most homeowners in Orange County or whatever county they're in choose New American Funding is because we, it's, it's, it's primarily our relationship with the entities. And those entities are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, VA, and FHA. Our relationship with these sources are very strong, which enable us to provide certain perks and products that most lenders simply cannot. And at the end of the day, whether you choose Bank of America or you choose another lender, it's, it all, we all go to the same place. We all go to the same well for the water. Does that make sense? And so that kind of helps you distinguish yourself from, from being different from everyone else and kind of giving them the notion that, that, we, that we all go to the same place. It's just you're not paying Uber to get to me. You're already with me, right? So I'm not a middleman. I'm not, I'm not um, kind of the person that, you know, you're going to speak to me and then you're going to speak to nine different people. Where in that very first conversation, we want to let them know of course, certain things like when, when if, you know, if you guys have ever purchased the house, you want to be empathetic with what they're going through. But if some of you have never purchased the house, then you can simply reference the case studies or the stories or at least understand what it would be like to be in their shoes. And primarily with people who are getting pre-qualified, they don't know what to ask. They just want to know what's the maximum that I can afford. And that's fine. You know, you, you want to let them know that, but more importantly, start planting seeds because in the second call, you're going to sell the plant. And so those seeds that you plant in the very beginning is like, hey, well, you know what? I can't even move forward unless I can actually give you a qualification. The good news is I don't give you best case scenario. I can only give you information that's applicable to you. And I found this very helpful because at the time of you entering escrow, you're going to put a month, you're going to put an earnest money deposit. They're at risk of losing the earnest money deposit. They're at risk of wasting their time, right? And so that would be something that I would sell on, which actually is, is more in line with fear. And the reason why that's effective is because you're ultimately positioning yourself as a way to protect them. Whereas most other agents and competitors are just about getting a prequal. Oh yeah, I'll get you prequalified for whatever you need. What do you want? I want a $500,000. Okay, yeah, let me go ahead and, and put that together. It's, it's more service oriented where if we position ourselves as a consultant, they'll actually appreciate that more because they'll feel safer with us. But more importantly, they're not going to view you as a salesman. They'll view you as a consultant. And I can't stress how important that is because if you are, are viewed and classified as a salesman, they're, they're not going to look at you any different from the next LO that calls them or talks to them. That makes sense? So how you position yourself as a consultant is understanding three things that really influences a buying decision. And these three things are love, <laughs> fear, and status. That's it. If you understand what they love, what they fear, and, and the status that they want, you can actually control their buying decision. It, it, it seems kind of broad, right? But let me give you an example. So so how, how the example that I just gave you kind of showed you how to sell based on fear, the fear of losing their money, the fear of wasting their time, the fear of getting emotionally invested into a house, right? Like, hey, I've, I've heard a lot of, uh, of horror stories of people getting pre-qualified from the wrong lender. They end up getting emotionally tied into a home, going through escrow just for the loan to fall out. The problem with that is most of their stuff's already packed. Their house is already sold. They, they're sitting outside with a U-Haul truck with nowhere to go. So in order to help you avoid that, I need to make sure I can even proceed with this phone conversation first. Does that make sense? Um, the, what makes us a little bit different is that I don't just send you a piece of paper saying that, hey, you could go buy this home. My piece of paper is actually qualified. 
It's, it's already pre-underwritten. And why realtors respect that is because when they make an offer, they know that they have a bridge to cross with you to get to the other side. Whereas if your prequal is going to be based off of some hungry loan officer, I mean, technically, they're going to tell you whatever you want to hear. But the problem with that is, though, is that this next move or this investment can actually put you in harm's way if you don't have your I's dotted or your T's crossed. So that's what we specialize here. We actually dot our I's and cross our T's and then you move right back in, right? Now, besides fear, you could do it for love. And so for, um, you know, for selling, say, hey, you know what? Any properties that you come across, just shoot me over the address. I'll send you over this real neat report. And this neat report is this property profile report. But we forget that as consumers, they don't have access to this information, right? And so I can send you this real cool report. I know you got kids. I could tell you the school rating on that school district. Right. But more importantly, it keeps them engaged with you. So when they find a house, they're more inclined to notify you. And that just keeps you on their radar. Right. Because as a parent, when I was buying a house, one, the primary reason why I bought my house was because of the rating of the school system. Right. The whole reason why I wanted to move South Orange County is because the school rating is far greater than North Side Orange County or South Side Orange County. Right. Um, it, I'm sorry. Um, uh, like your Belinda or Anaheim. And, and, and if, if I were speaking to a salesperson that understood that my primary motive was to get the best school system and that sales agent continuously told me, hey, um, be sure that when you find a house that you th you're thinking about making an offer on, call me. I'm going to pull up all the information on the school district to make sure that you're fully aware. Don't rely on Zillow, right? Don't rely on Redfin. Give me a call because our property profile that's accessible through BV is very simple to pull, right? All you got to do is pull an email get report and shoot out that report has your contact information but more importantly that also acts as a referral as kind of like a referral magnet in the future and you know i'll go over that in maybe another meeting but the reason why that that helps is because the this is this is this is actually attaching it to things that they love and typically homeowners are buying things based out of love right so they'll They'll buy their house because they love their family and they want their kids to grow up in a, in, a, in a right area. They want their kids to go in the right school district. They want their kids to be safe or the family to be safe. And sometimes this is being overlooked at the point of, of pre-qualification and we kind of overlook it and we're just based on business, right? Oh yeah, let me get your pre-qual, let me talk about your documents. You got to save that until they're emotionally invested into you, right? Now here comes status. So love, fear, and status. So status is um is something that the prospect will tell you like they'll tell you but they don't even know they're telling you it and so for in other words they may say yeah you know what i want to buy i want to get a house at like five hundred thousand. i'm looking in a specific county one of the questions we ask right like hey have you already found a property do you know where you want to buy and they're going to tell you so yeah i want to buy into this zip code uh, or this area and then we find out that that zip code or that area is far beyond their limit right like their buying potential but there's a reason why they want that, that area. And primarily, it's probably because of status. Like people move to Irvine just for the status of saying, yeah, I bought a house in Irvine, right? Just kind of to, to feel that bravado that goes along with it. Because not everybody's going to have a family. Not everybody's going to be buying just for their kids. And so we need to identify why they want to buy in that area. But more importantly, when we identify why, and typically it is because of status, we have to kind of sprinkle it into our communications with them and so if i understood that they wanted to buy in a specific area or a zip code because they they like the status of it and i know where they live now i'm going to sell them based without them even telling me like oh yeah i mean going to irvine from anaheim it's going to be completely night and day the neighborhoods are clean streets are wider school districts are far better so if you decide to have kids in the future and i understand that they don't have kids this is going to be definitely a great place to raise your family more importantly when you you know live in this type of community not only will you feel safer but your property value will have more chances of going up which will thus increase your investment and that's primarily one of the reasons why people buy houses is to have a higher return on their property right so if you bought a house like let's say in your local area you know your value may not climb as high as buying it within this area so I want to make sure that you're able to get in this area. But more importantly, if you're going to spend your time searching in this area, you need, you need a buttoned up pre-qualification. So here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this conversation, but more importantly, I'm not just going to send you a, pre, uh, a pre-qualification pre letter. I'm going to send you what's called a pre-approval letter. Now you're, starting to, now you're starting to distinguish the difference between the two and say, let me explain. Uh, the reason why a, a pre-qualification letter is not as efficient is because most lenders give it because they're not a direct lender like I am. They don't have the relationship with the entities like I do. So what they'll do is give you a pre-qualification letter, and that's going to be just based on conversation. It's not going to be underwritten. They might ask you for a pay stub, but that pre-qualification is not necessarily something you can rely on and put your time in because if you put your time in and, and you find out that pre-call is not done right, well, guess what? You just wasted time. You possibly put your earnest money deposit at risk, but more importantly, when you become emotionally invested to a home, it really sucks to lose that home, right? Now you're selling on things that they want to know about because sometimes they haven't bought a house. And that's all about understanding your prospect, right? It, it's the difference between knowing who you're talking to, whether it's a first time home buyer or it's someone who's selling their house to go buy a new. If we could take the time to understand why they're, they're selling their home and moving rather than take the time and, and trying to understand what they qualify for, that bond is actually what's going to secure them to you. It's not about the rate and the fees, right? And so if you do it correctly on the very first conversation, not only will they remember you, but they'll isolate their focus to you because they feel this, uh, this called reciprocity. Like you've been taking care of them, so their loyalty is to you. Where if you don't, you know, like there's this, uh, this influence that we all have, like, hey, call your bar or call, you know, make sure you're calling them and you're staying in tune with them. You're sending your emails so that they don't forget you. Well, it kind of gets mundane, but not only that, it becomes very, um, very tedious. Because we're constantly trying to give them a call. Hey, how's the shopping going? <laughs> right? And now we just framed ourselves as that salesman again. We're just that annoying banner ad that you just always hit X on. Like, get the fuck out the way. <laughs> right? But instead, if you actually present value and say, um, you know, like, hey, like you plant the seed at the very beginning and say, hey, any property you find, I got this real neat tool. It's going to give you this real cool report. It's going to tell you the growth and equity in that area, but more importantly, the school rating system, or I'm sorry, the, the, the school district rating. It's going to give you all this information you need to know before you actually put your hard money, hard-earned money in that area. So be sure that if, whenever you find a home, and then what that'll do is they'll, they'll say, oh, I like this house. Hey, send Daniel that address because I want that report. Now, now you've just anchored yourself to that process. So you don't necessarily need to be in front of them all the time. They're actually being in front of you, right? And the more often that they communicate, see, there's this thing with sales is that when people call you, they need something from you. But when we call them, it's, it's reverse. It's we need something from them. And this is why a lot of people forward to voicemail. They don't respond back because we're actually contacting them and we're positioning ourselves that we need them. But if you can be creative and position yourself where they need you for something, then they'll always need you. They'll even need you at time of closing. That makes sense? Yeah, so there, again, there's a, a plethora of information on the YouTube channel and, 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 uh, and the Facebook channel that goes over this content. Um, and I think that if you, if you look at it in a different way, not only will you actually have fun doing this, but it's almost like you learn kind of a cheat code. It becomes almost too easy. Like, it's like, damn, <laughs> this isn't even, wow. You know, it's crazy how, how a, a different approach, a different formula, a different way of going about things actually attracts them to you and takes away the grind. So if you ever get to a point where people are going ghost on you, you don't feel appreciated, you feel like you're just going through this process just to, just to get let down in the future, like even if they go through it and, and that falls out of escrow, it doesn't mean that they're not going to work with you anymore. It doesn't mean that that deal is now dead. It just means that, that, that they need to find another property, right? But sometimes when we hear this news, we become deflated. And we're like, damn, man, I was really counting on that loan to go, to go all the way through. And sometimes we won't, we'll actually give it, we'll radiate that energy in our communication with the prospect and show them frustration. That in itself is going to push that prospect away because they'll be like, man, this guy just looked at me as a number. He's upset because the loan didn't go through. Instead, have empathy and compassion towards that prospect. Oh, man, I'm sorry about that. Hey, let's make sure this doesn't happen again. Okay, so get back in the field. Let's go search for some new homes. When you, when you, again, when you find the address, send me the address. I want to help protect you for it, okay? 
right? I'll, if anything, let me go ahead and reach out to your realtor or make sure everyone on board is aware that next time we make an offer on a home that we learn from this example. But you don't need to call them. I'll call them. Make it easier for them. Does that make sense? To where it's almost like you're their concierge. And they'll appreciate that. People will pay a premium for convenience. It's very true, right? They'll pay premium. They'll pay whatever price for the convenience of believing that it's handled. That's why some of us got maids. <laughs> some of us, you know, get our cars washed. We don't wash our car. <laughs> I haven't washed my car in years. You know what I mean? Like, it's because of the convenience. It's just knowing that, knowing that it's taken care of. So if you could find ways to help protect people uh, from the fear or help protect the things that they love or help protect their status, you'll have a little bit more of a stronger bond than anyone else who's, who's speaking to that prospect. Make sense?